Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I recently bought a broken PC in need of a new motherboard and so I did what anyone on a very tight budget would do and took to AliExpress in search of a deal. It was there I found what is, according to Google Translate, a luxury raw board of military quality. This luxury raw board cost me just over £20 once converted and it was exactly what I was looking for to replace the existing and fried motherboard inside my newly acquired budget gaming PC. I had planned on making a very different video today but some potential legal issues put a stop to that. I will explain very shortly. Today then I thought I'd share my honest opinions of this after about two weeks of use. So these B75 chipset boards are available at various prices from different sellers and what drew me to it was the inclusion of an M.2 slot not usually found on 1155 boards. This is some sort of custom creation, the likes of which AliExpress is well known for. In the box we have an IO shield, single SATA cable and a sheet of paper detailing the layout of the pins and jumpers. The board itself is quite small, pretty light and I am definitely a fan of the black and orange colour scheme. I think B75 chipset boards traditionally bridged the gap between entry level H61 offerings and more expensive business class products, so while this isn't anything fancy, the basics are covered. There's a 24 pin power connector, 8 pin CPU connector which is surprising and two DDR3 RAM slots. Support here is up to 16 gigs of 1600MHz DDR3. We've also got PCIe X16 and X1 slots as well as four traditional SATA plugs. The USB 3 connector also means we can use this board with modern computer cases without an adapter. Everything here is also very well labelled. There's no shortage of ports at the back, either with USB 2 and 3 making an appearance along with HDMI, VGA and DVI. As I said before, what drew me to this was the M.2 slot which sits right in the middle of the board and honestly, I couldn't get this to work right away. It turns out these little jumpers above the PCIe slot here needed to be moved across to the left covering the first two pins. After that, my NVMe drive was detected and all was well. You'll need to supply your own CMOS battery as well by the way, because it doesn't come with one. Apparently this board supports second and third gen core i-series CPUs as well as Pentiums and Celerons and today I'm using my i7-2600 with 16 gigs of DDR3. This was supported out of the box without any issues and after applying thermal paste and attaching a flimsy but sufficient stock cooler, I booted up into the basic BIOS. Not much going on here but again, the basics are covered. I thought these little strips might light up, but I think I was asking way too much of 20 quid. First thing I did in Windows was run a Crystal Disk Mark test just to give us some context in terms of speeds. Naturally, I was expecting a slower result, and here is how using my NVMe M.2 drive compares with my modern socket 1700i5 system and this 1155 based PC. Slower on paper for sure, but the system still feels snappy. Games still load pretty quickly too. Quicker than if we were using a traditional hard drive, that's for sure. The main reason I also like having the M.2 functionality is because that's where all my games are stored, so I can just swap the drive between systems for benchmarking purposes. Also, there's less cables to worry about, and inside a case, everything looks neater. I've been using this board for a couple of weeks on and off outside of when I'm benchmarking hardware. I've been using it with an RTX 4060 which is not a sensible pairing by any means, especially as any graphics card will run in PCIe 2 mode because of the old socket. At least we know that even the most modern of graphics cards will work no problem though and honestly once I enabled frame generation I found that gaming felt a lot better with this unlikely duo but don't pair an i7-2600 with a modern RTX 40 series card. I'll have to keep you updated every six months or so regarding the functionality of this cheap AliExpress board, but so far, so good. I'll have a full build using this thing very soon, but it's definitely worth remembering that there are more well-known brand 1155 boards out there that won't cost that much more on sites like eBay secondhand, and if you don't want or need M.2, or you just want a more well-known and feature-rich part, then keep all that in mind. 
This is very handy for me as someone who likes to move their M.2 SSD drive around a lot, but mine is probably quite a less common use case. But there we go, a quick review and my initial impressions of this weird and wacky custom AliExpress board, which has definitely saved an old machine of mine. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one when I can show you the video I had planned on making today.